Recently went on a day hike in Bear Mountain, New York, the state park up there. And I was hoping for 30 to 40 degree weather. Instead I got low 50s, high 40s. <laughs> so what you have in front of you here is the Umlindi pack that I hiked with. No belt. I do have the belt, but I decided I wanted to test one particular configuration and that was without the belt. Just the two one pockets with an Oasis Nalgene USGI format canteen in each pocket, one quart each. And down here I have this thing the Crazy Creek lounge chair. It's the extra long one, as you can see. Usually they're just that long. And then up here I had my hard shell with insulation in the form of an LL Bean 3-in-1 Weather Challenger jacket, which has a, a Primaloft shell or a Primaloft insulation that works pretty darn good. And then here, uh, I didn't have anything. I just kind of thought of this as overflow in case of anything and in case you're wondering about video and things of that nature my brother decided to come with me at the last minute so all my plans for for videoing and everything I just I set aside we hardly see each other and he came all the way from Korea where he's teaching English so for those unfamiliar with the Um Lindy pack made by Hill People Gear, it is somewhere in the high 20s, low 30 liter capacity. It is a single entry pack, top loading, and then it has two pockets on the side. As you can see, these are empty. But canteen there, canteen here. And they do intrude slightly into the main compartment area. So just an FYI. But it is large enough to house a USGI canteen cup. Which is pretty neat. I put a, I created a reflective, Reflectix insulator for mine. But for, again, just for day hike, a little something to make some hot chocolate. And then there's two pockets down here, or uh, two straps down here. There's no. Fast text type of buckle. It's just a G hook. And it works out just fine. No problems. Everything you see here is included. Same on each side. And then back here, that's how they've decided to secure it. They actually wrapped it over. I actually changed this so that it was more direct. Good or bad, not sure. Worked out fine though. On the top, we have a single strap, this one with a buckle. And the thing is, it also has a G hook. And on the back here is the yoke. That's what I call it. I don't know if it's officially called that, but it's a yoke. Very comfortable. You have to set it just right though, because this, when it was set wrong, actually <clears throat> came up against the back of my neck. So I had it, I had it too high. It had to be lower. My shoulders were basically here instead of being here. That kind of thing. The sternum strap included the bungees with the locks 
also included. And then there's uh, straps with the same, it's like, like a type of hypalon, like a rubberized canvas, if you will. Sort of the thing they use on professional life rafts. Comes with the prairie belt. So those, you the prairie belt, you use it to pull this portion inward to rest basically this against your back. And so it takes a lot of the, of the weight off of the shoulder straps if you're using the prairie belt, which is very easy to install. You just lay it in the middle down here, fold it over, good to go. All right, so what else did I have in the pack? My total load came out to 27 pounds. Why? Because I'm like that. I'm an overpacker. And so the first thing I had was first aid kit with tourniquet. I'll get into that in some other um, video. This is a drop leg survival kit. I did it for ease of use. Basically, it doesn't travel in the pack, it travels on my belt. I just leave it in the pack as a reminder. And then tethered to the strap that's on the belt. It doesn't actually come off the belt. I had to make this <clears throat> myself using a speedy stitcher, but I have uh, an ACR. And I'll get to this in another video. So, this is like a possibles pouch and then I have fire and I have a stove I'll get to that here hold on for another bouncy sound right. this I carried strictly to see the temperature so that's how I knew it was in the mid 50s and stuff this I carried thinking I could contact somebody off the top of the mountain uh, nobody was listening ham radio Not part of the kit just part of that particular trip if that makes sense and then in here is one of the odorproof a lock sacks And then water filter a bandana a hundred feet of class 2 paracord. This is not 550. It's a uh, uh, 275 I guess and I have here two pieces of class 1a paracord as prusik loops so this is two which means it has a core in this case three strands and this is 1a the a meaning there's no core it's just the sheath Here I had hot chocolate, a couple of fig bars, a, a couple of granola bars, and now it's just snack on the mountain. Hot chocolate was excellent. Just in case, some hand warmers. Three pairs, got a Minari eye, and there's three pairs inside here, which is kind of neat. Again, most of this is contingency stuff, quite frankly. So this here for chopping apart some trees and making a mattress if I had to. TP and nose P. Blowing your nose. And at the bottom here is something from another video I have up called an Alpha Tent. This is just a USGI poncho. And with that, I have some replacement tent poles that I cut to the right length. They're 8% longer than the longest diagonal on the poncho. And then this here I just made to protect the pack from the tips. This here, I did this in, in CAD. I think free CAD is what I designed it in. And then I had it 3D printed. So this way I can put this into the grommet and it won't slip through. And 
I can keep my thick bungee cord on there. This was trip specific, a pair of binoculars. It's too cloudy to see anything, unfortunately. And then here I have a pair of crampons. Now, the thing that took up the most space in the pack. Again, another A-lock sack. A heavy duty pair of darn tough. I think these were the mountain, over the calf mountain socks. I love over the calf socks. I hate calf length socks, which just inevitably fall down. I have a merino wool set of long johns. Here I have arrow stitch over gloves, they're waterproof gloves. And then here I have a set of rain pants. Now, this A lock sack. I just sat on it and then closed it up, get all the air out and close it up, and it's still holding vacuum. So I definitely recommend these A-lock sacks. I believe this is 12 by 30. Might be 24, but it's supposed to say on here somewhere. Anyway, I'll throw it in the description below. Um, the links below are only the things I would use myself, so I'm not going to try and snow you with anything, but that is what I carried. It's not what I wore. I didn't wear any of this unless I had to, uh, but that's what I carried on the mountain. So let's take a look at some detail stuff. What... Do I have in here? This thing is a 26,000 milliamp hour battery back. I can hook my iPhone or whatever to it. It's the RAV Power, again, linked below. A USB Mini, or whatever the hell it is that nobody uses anymore. Type C, in and out. So you can charge through, charge this battery through that, or charge something else through it. And then two regular USB ports. And over here, taking you back now, is a fire kit. And in here I have matches. I have a rotary striker. In my opinion, the best thing to have. And then the uh, striker tabs for the matches, and then some tinder, two pieces of tinder. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, that's not a waterproof case, I have one of those, they suck. You are correct. You have to work on both flats. Both flats, you gotta take this uh, O-ring, just roll it off, work on the flat, smooth that flat out, then it becomes waterproof. There's uh, pieces of flashing from the tooling process or the injection molding process that don't get cleared up and that prevents the O-ring from sealing. And this, this little pouch I got from County Com, I have my stove. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. The um, I carry a hundred gram, the smallest version of the of that butane stuff. So I have a small stove in here. I have two flints, and those flints come with another rotary striker. So I just I use the rotary striker to ignite the stove. In here I have a neck buff. Stretchy merino wool neck buff. Never used it. Didn't have to. Too hot. <laughs> Sweating. 
literally. No matter how slow I went, I have water purification tablets to go along with the filter. And because I'm like that, I have a mosquito net. Again, this is contingency stuff in case I need to spend out the night out for whatever silly reason. And then a signal panel. And that's what I have. This rides in the pack. In case you're wondering what this looks like. I think it's an 18 by 18 square. It's two-sided. And there's various ways you fold it to convey certain messages. So that is purple, in case the camera's not giving it to you correctly, but it looks like it. And then international orange. And then if you fold it certain ways, you convey certain meanings. And I forget what this one is, but that's one way. And quite frankly, I don't know why they chose purple and orange, but <clears throat> uh, it's pretty standardized in the US military, these two colors. Seems to me it would just be conflicting. Anyway. I got it mostly because it's international orange. So, so there. All right. So fun stuff, fun gear. That's my day pack for a winter day hike. And then for an overnight day hike, um, what I do is I replace my insulation with the Mount, the Hill People Gear Mountain Serape. And I'll show you that here in a second. So in here is my Hill People Gear Mountain Serape, the full size, because it's more. And it's in a military seal line bag. So you can see the Serape is a bit too large. But this is for rain, not for submerging. And there's a strap here. But anyway, I would mount this to the pack. And if I was feeling frisky, I would take the tent poles out. If I was intentionally staying overnight somewhere. I'll take these out. And, um, I like the poncho. I, I admit I like the poncho because of its rain capabilities. And uh, I'd mount this either the bottom or top, probably on the top, and uh, in a small tent, like a light fighter, one person tent, a real tent, so to speak, on the other side, and then the the chair, I would put that on these. I would mount this on the face of the pack. But it, as an overnight pack, it's kind of pushing it. So I would recommend the Ute, if anything, for an overnight pack. Uh, but here is the Mountain Serape is a great coat in addition to being a sleeping bag in addition to being a blanket and it has a hood so pretty neat stuff but in here i used to have a usgi patrol bag which again just fit <laughs> so so this zipper you undo it all the way around and then here in the middle area is the hood. There's no structure to the hood. So yeah, it kind of falls in your face. So just wear a cap, good to go. But this thing is basically the shape of a poncho. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I just use a, a whoopee. I have one of those. In my experience, they're not actually that warm. 
So I know that's heresy, but again, just my experience. So that's it. Looks great. I'm going to leave it here just the way it is. No cleanup. Turn on TV and veg out. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.